While playing a game, have you ever wondered how the background is infinitely moving and how can you make that? Well, in this video, we are gonna learn just that. So, what do I mean by infinitely moving the background or repeating background and why do you need a repeating background? In games like Flappy Bird, how the game mechanic works is not by moving the player forward, instead by making the objects and background moving towards the player giving the illusion of actually moving the player forward. So if you are making a similar game, this tutorial will help you to create that infinite moving background look. Hey guys, it's me Apurba. Welcome back to my channel. Now let's go back to the tutorial. In Unity, I have a simple scene with nothing but a background sprite. I'm gonna drag and drop that background sprite into the scene view. Now, what I'm gonna do is duplicate this by selecting it and pressing Ctrl plus D and move it to the side so it looks like one sprite. Now, I'm doing this here because I don't have a repeatable background like I have made here. As you can see here, it's not perfect but you can easily fix that with just 2 minutes in Photoshop. You should make your background repeatable in order for this to work. Just make sure whatever you have in the first half of your background is mirrored in the second half. Now what I'm going to do is create an empty game object and call it background. I'm gonna make both of these a child of background. The way it's gonna work is the camera will see the first half. I'm just gonna select my camera and press Ctrl Shift F to make this our camera's view. Then a script will move the background to left and when it reaches the second half's end, it will shift to our first half. Since both of these are the same image, the player won't be able to see the transition. Now let's move our background to the left. In the assets folder, create a C sharp script and call it move left and open it in Visual Studio in my case Visual Studio Code. The method that I'm gonna use to move this to the left is the translate method. So in the update function type transform.translate open and close parentheses and in parentheses type vector3.left multiplied with time dot delta time. Since I want to control the speed of how fast the background moves, I'm gonna create a public float called speed and I'm gonna default that to 10 for now. Now let's multiply the time dot delta time with our speed variable. If we save the script and go back to unity, it seems we have made an spelling mistake. So I'm just going to quickly fix that and attach the script to our background. Now if I play the game, as you can see, the background moves to the left. Now it's time to create the repeating part. In my assets folder, I'm gonna create a C sharp script and call it repeat background and open it in Visual Studio. For the repeating part, I'm gonna need a position. So up here, let's type vector3 start position. And in the start function, I'm gonna set our start position to our transform.position. In the update function, I'm gonna check if our transform.position.x is less than our start.position minus some value. So let's just put 15 here to see that if it works. What I'm going to do here is set our transform.position to our start position. So transform.position is equal to start position. If we save the script and attach the script to our background and play, as you can see, our background surely repeats but not seamlessly. The reason 15 is not the exact center. To get the exact center, what we can do is add a box collider 2D to our background. Right now, it's pretty small. So what I'm gonna do is switch my view to 2D and hit this edit collider button to edit this collider. Now I'm gonna adjust this to fit my entire image. If I just switch back my view to the 3D, Looks like I have made a mistake. So I'm gonna quickly reset all the transforms and adjust the collider again. Now it seems fine. So in my code, what I'm gonna do is type float repeat with and in the start function, I'm going to type repeat with is equal to get component, open and close this pointy bracket. I forgot what it is called and then open and close parentheses dot 
size dot x so what this line of code is going to do is set our repeat width to our box colliders size in the x axis and we need the middle part of it so i'm just going to divide that by 2 in the update function i'm just going to change the 15 here with our repeat width now if i save the script and run the game as you can see the background infinitely repeats itself seamlessly there we go now you have an infinite background that repeats itself seamlessly hope you find this video helpful and i will see you in the next video goodbye